What is up everybody, this is Tiko, also known as Richard, and I want to go today show you guys a bit of a custom gameplay. Uh, you can see it's an open map, we're not playing against any enemies. Um, you know, we have our scout, we have our prelate, and we have a few villagers up. Um, you know, a mill right here and some villagers right here. So I'm just bringing all of them forward. Um, so I'll show you guys a standard build order right here. Uh, just in this screen here, exactly what to expect. Uh, when you're going for, you know, Fast Castle or, um, you know, like a, a, a um, Ram Rush or a, you know, f uh, the specifically fighting for the relics. You can see on this game, the relics are really badly spawned on the opposite side of the map. Only one close here. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four relics. Usually there's five, but this game there's only four relics. Um, so really difficult. Um, to do that, so we'll, 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 we'll train up a few more villagers right now um, and then I'll show you guys exactly, you can see the resources are like maxed out so that we don't need to worry about um, you know any of that, so I'm gonna delete all of these buildings there's some more villagers here and you guys obviously know the standard uh, start, you know you take your first few villagers um, you know you build your house and so forth but we'll show you exactly like as if uh we're starting with the normal six villagers but we'll we'll start with this many so that's basically what you're going to work up towards so as soon as you start your obviously your credit is inspiring villagers so you're going to use inspire villager build the house immediately after that build a gold mine you take the four inspired villagers you go over to the gold mine and you can work on getting up to three villagers and move over to the lumber camp okay so that's that's a standard of as you can get if you're playing against the fridge keep rushing for that first edge you can see this villager is going on to gold um but go more heavy onto your uh wood in the beginning and keep four to six villagers you know on the food so you can keep that villager production up and then scale into a, a mill and you use that mold to maybe go for a wheelbarrow upgrade if you can otherwise it's just to get um, the extra food supply if you don't have the sheep and then you're going to use more villagers to then as soon as you have that 150 wood from the villagers here chopping wood you're going to immediately like the french go into a um, barracks and with the barracks let's just drop this food off you know, imagine these villagers are actually a food villager. You're building this with one. You don't necessarily building it with all the villagers. You're just building it with one. But now we have the barracks up. You're training up more. Uh, you're getting up more wood. You build your second barracks. You build a house. Um, and once that's done, you go into your um, mines work palace, not Arkan Chapel. So this is going to be a rush build for the men at arms rush as a start. We'll, we'll, we'll remove all the villagers once, uh, we'll stop at 20. 20 I guess is a good number because that gives you a good idea of what to expect and so forth. Um, so you can see we're p p not speed building the Mineworks Palace. Three villagers is pretty good. Um, like I said, against the French, train four to five um, spearmen and then see what resources are most vulnerable. Like in this case, let's say it's against the French. I'm taking up one villager here. I'm going to wall off here on the side. Uh, this gap is way too open, so you're going to have to respect that and send some spearmen maybe this way. But one thing to remember is the French specifically, they go from um, you know, knights into archers. And if you're going to try and fight that with spearmen and archers, you're going to lose the fight because your spearman does not have the hit points like the knights to actually uh, defend against those, those type of rush. Uh, those type of rush plays. Okay, so now we have our spearmen coming out. Uh, four to five spearmen is more than enough. You see, we we have our five village spearmen there. They're defending the gold. You're microing it around this side. You have a wall here that's safe there. Um, sometimes I even wall like this. You can you can even wall off like 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 this uh, to get a wall straight across the front. So you kind of force them to either come from this side or from this side and you can even take another villager and roll in um, like that you know so now you have this opening here in the base it's more difficult for them to come in so they have to come in from this side or they have to come in from this side okay so now we're um, um, at age two 
right? Now, the first thing is these villagers, you don't want to get rid of your wood villagers. Even if you're building these walls, rather do it with your gold villagers, rather do it with your uh, food villagers if you can. But that's a, that's the main goal, right? Now, with the main sword palace, we're focusing on men at arms rush. You're going to do firstly your defense. You're going to do your boomery, marching drills, and then siege engineering. I'm doing siege engineering last because I'll show you exactly what happened. Now we, we have reached age 2. Um, look at the time now. We're going to start at 7 minutes 30 exactly. We're just waiting for the time here on top. 9.30. So obviously you won't be able to queue these men arms like this in a normal game. But um, you know the villi these villagers are probably just going to be still on food. Um, you know, you still keep the pr villager production up, nothing crazy. If you need to, pull some villagers off of gold as soon as you reach the 600 gold. But what I want to show you guys is the amount of men at arms we need at the same time um, while these men at arms are being trained, the Mineswood Palace is being um, pushing is, is pushing those upgrades, right? Uh, this one is, is uh, a minute, that one is a minute 30. Um, and the siege engineering is one minute. So the reason why you want two is you'll see, I want to show you exactly how many men at arms you have. The same time that we started the upgrades, uh, how many men at arms you basically have and why we want to have the siege engineering last. So at this point it will be very difficult to get an archery range or anything like that added to this to the standard build order. Like you see it's the barracks, the houses, you're probably going to you see my population is starting yeah. to cap out, so we'll use the villagers now to just uh, build some more houses. Don't worry, it's not like it's not training, it's just the one barracks that's not training. It can happen in a normal game as well, um, so just be careful of that. And we, we need a little bit of gold, you can even go down to like two villagers. Um, you know, you don't need the three villagers on gold. That's that's pretty fine, and then obviously uh, these villagers are going to be like food villagers, right? And they're just going to keep farming food, and you're going to build up to quite a lot of villagers. Um, you're going to build up to like 13 to 16 food villagers, but you're prioritizing the men at arms because I want to show you guys how many men at arms we have by the time um, these upgrades are done. Now you. The insulated helms, the reason why I'm not taking the iron under the mesh is because when you're, let's say, this relic right here is the enemy, right? When you're going to rush with these metal arms, there's a few things that you need. You need uh, very heavy wood, so you're going to need 300 wood per uh, ram that you want to train, right? So the gold is not priority, food is not a priority after the metal arms are done. So you, you're going for an all-in, but don't necessarily stop prioritizing how your villagers are being um, micro basically right so now we're getting almost how many is here that's 12 almost 15 villagers and you can see now the marching drills are almost done now usually with the marching drills um, you can see now that's actually four houses that you need for the strategy so you can count that's 50 uh, 100 200 wood there another 200 wood for the mill and the uh, uh, lumber camp another 50 wood for the mining camp so that's 450 550 um, 600 700 800 900 wood basically that you need for the for the minute arms. now you can see the marching drills are done and the last minute arms is being trained right 15 is kind of the timing push, you're looking for a timing push on on when you start this and when you're pushing in with this. So now your villagers, a lot more villagers can be sent over to, uh, to your wood line because you want to get to that, um, what do you call it, uh, to that 300 gold that you need for the ram rush, right? Now, at this point in time, you can be vulnerable, you know, the spearmen are not really... Um, you know that's specific to the French player because you can't expect that you're going to do this and not get countered, right? But while we're moving into position, you can see the siege engineering is coming up, and then after that we'll do an iron mesh because you need some construction time to get stuff done. So this is the uh, the relic is the enemy base. We're waiting for the siege engineering to come up. You can see how close to the timing that is. We're just picking up that, and you're basically standing ready. As soon as that uh, siege engineering becomes available, you don't need a, a blacksmith because it counts as a blacksmith. Now you train uh, your first ram, 
basically by the time this ram is done if you have the resources queue a second one move a few uh, men over and they'll just finish this thing. if you can if you see and you scout out your enemy and you don't see any um you know insane pushes or anything happening from their side of very defensive place go for three you know uh build build the third one so you'll see they'll finish all the men with arms will finish this one and they'll go over to that one they call it a little round dance now a nice way to keep your unit safe i'll show you guys once this round is done you actually garrison them because it's 15 units and you garrison them in one of the battering rounds right um so what's gonna, probably going to happen is they're going to pull villagers and or, or units you see like that and this is what you're pushing with. so i'm attack moving going for objectives you're going for landmarks uh town center or uh, any other uh, enemy landmarks if the enemy comes to you right you can quickly just click close by de garrison those units and have them selected like a key bind like this right so let's say my rams are going in i i i, I see some villagers coming i go into an attack move they have the marching draws they'll quickly deal with that they'll have extra armor and health to deal with anything else once the threat starts going away you garrison again if they start moving closer you get them out uh, press four again and now you attack moving okay okay so the second strategy we're gonna talk about is the fast castle so we're gonna start with the six villagers on sheep obviously your scouts moving around to start with the prelate into villagers and obviously i can't um speed this up any more than a standard game i just have the resources right because we max out the resources so just to show you guys as easy and quickly as possible uh, yeah, yeah. what to expect with no extra uh, delays yeah. you can see there's no no enemy or anything on, on the map so the villagers are being trained ready for the inspired villager taking the first inspired villager building a house after that where's the gold one actually a very very ugly gold one here at the back so we can use uh, this one right here once that's done we're waiting for those villagers uh, to be inspired We'll take three inspired villagers, drop that off, and then go assist with the gold man. So that's four villagers on gold and more going straight onto the food. So with the scout, you want to make sure you scout out your enemy, make sure you you look out for any possible rushes and so forth. But the thing is, you don't want to just be building um, the necessary units to um, to farm right we're not focusing on farming we're focusing on the build order right so gold uh, uh, gold mine is up you're getting more villagers i'll leave them there just for demonstration purposes uh now there's four villagers uh, again on food plus the prelate and now we're getting the next villager um out onto the lumber camp you want to get that lumber camp uh, on three villagers and you have four on gold and the rest on food because as soon as you hit that 400 food you're going to use the gold villagers um, and build a Archon Chapel. Your Archon Chapel you want to get as much of the wood line in as possible. You obviously have the gold line in and this could have been a little bit to the left so you can get this food in uh, or you bring your sheep, you know, there's a sheep, you bring them into the Archon Chapel like this. So it means as soon as these villagers are done here, they're actually going to farm the sheep under the inspiration of the uh, landmark. Remember, you're building it with three villagers, you're not, in, not speed building anything. So that's why you see now that, that villagers are within the Archon Chapel. So as soon as this is done, my food will, will be inspired, my wood will be inspired, and my gold. So that's pretty perfect to, to start. If you can get that right, that's really, really good. If you can include the berries, that's even better. Um, so now I have the three villagers on the on the wood. Let's just finish the wood <laughs> with the lumber mill. Um, and now I'm going to use the if if you have, while you're busy with this, obviously you can get a mill up. And if you're playing against French or English, you want to wait for H2 before you do any barracks, archery range or stable, because obviously the archery range and the stable only comes in the H2. If it's against the French. You're going to do a uh, barracks in the beginning because you want to get the spearmen out before the um, French cavalry starts rushing at you. We're just using this as an example, nothing like specific, it's a custom game, but it does give you the basic understanding of, of exactly what to do. Um, 
So now the Arkan Chapel is almost done. Uh, I actually forgot to train villagers there, so you keep the villager production up. Uh, keep your food production up. Obviously, they're going to move over to berries now. Um, if you didn't get any sheep, but obviously you have a few sheep. If you have a deer spawn very close by, like this is very dangerous. You don't want to move out that far. Like a deer spawn, like right here, or maybe like just outside the ring here, that would be fine. But this is quite far. Prelip goes into the building. Once that's done, now let's say for argument's sake, we're playing against the English. We're building a stable. Stable is bound to seven. Um, town center is to two just keep that villager production up keep the uh, wood line up three to five yeah you see here's the four villagers those villagers that are done with the um, Arkham Chapel they can go back to gold and you're gonna send one more to, to have the five villagers on gold and now they are inspired as well so you don't have to worry then you get the wheelbarrow upgrade to assist with gathering resources and you're gonna use the stable we're obviously pretending like we're playing against the English and we're training up those four to five um, um, horsemen because that's going to deal with those pesky little archers that they rush with so they can't do any ram rush or anything like that and the time that these units take to train is um, 22 seconds so that's that's pretty fine that's 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 fine you don't really need more than that if you want you can fill it in with some archers uh, so you have horsemen and archers versus the English which will probably train spearmen and archers but with the horsemen and archers like French training uh, knights and archers that's going to be really nice if it was the French I would have trained the barracks and transitioned from the barracks into a few spearmen then more horsemen and then um, fill that up with archers it's a more diverse you need, need a very heavy goal to defend against some good French players or you just need to wall off properly and so forth um, and also try not to waste your units try and fight like close to your town center and build these type of buildings right on top of your town center right so now we have the mill we have um, the units up there we have the stable coming there we actually hit population cap but these uh, wood line workers are going to be filled up so you can see overpopulated on the gold we'll move uh, that six right so we'll move one down just put it on the gold uh, on the wood line um, and keep your food production up because you want to get to that 1200 food as soon as these few horsemen are done you can even fill it up with maybe one or three archers you don't want to train these zero units because you can't be surprised as soon as you reach that castle age that they arrive with 20 odd units in your base and then you have a problem so we fill up the archery range uh, let's get another house or two going i think four houses is like the standard for most times um you can see we're still sitting on a population gap so once that's done, um, we're going to head straight into a Regent's Cathedral. And while the Regent's Cathedral is busy, I just want this house to finish. Uh, we're actually going to start training the prelates and send the prelates in the direction of the relics like this. You can see these relics are really badly spawned. Obviously, it's because it's a single uh, 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 one player only. Um, that's why they are there. But we're waiting for that first prelate to get finished. Oh, that's actually a villager, sorry. You can see now that's actually quite a nice army to just defend your base while you're trying to push for those relics. So the prelate's gonna go up, you can actually send an archer in that direction to deal with any pesky wolves and so forth. Even if it's a villager, they'll deal with wolves just fine. Just attack, move. Okay, there's the prelate out, second prelate's gonna go out here. Now you can see this uh, is getting speed pulled by... Um, seven villagers so it's going to be really quick but you can still see i got the villager and two prelates basically out if you need to drop this third prelate out from here and send that to a third relic so that's the goal here you can see the villager is going to deal with the wolf just fine and the prelate doesn't have a problem against the wolf you know they'll um they they can survive the wolf as soon as you pick up that that prelates immediately so the prelates are on the way first prelate Right here, um, so let's quickly check into this one. Pick up that relic straight to the back to the Red Nose Cathedral and send these villagers back onto your sheep or wherever you need to. Um, we're waiting for that one, and the other prelate is on its way here. So he's going to pick up this relic right here, bring that back. If you select the village, uh, the 
prelate, right? And I'm right clicking yeah, yeah. the relic, he'll pick up the relic, I'm shift clicking on the building. He won't drop it off, he'll stop right next to the building. So just check as soon as they are back uh, so you can actually drop off those those relics. And at this stage, um, the thing that's best to do next is to get a siege workshop out, uh, fill it in with some barracks, maybe two barracks. So that's going to be your ma major army strategy in the beginning while you're waiting for those um, relics to come back. And dropping off the relic. Once the relic is done, prelate goes back into the Arkham Chapel and now you get that inspiration buff. You can even train another prelate if you wanted to to just keep that buff going because that's a lot, a lot of resources lost without that 40% bonus. But you can see the three relics are basically coming back now. Um, four is a, is, is, is a bonus. Three is basically a must uh, if you can at least one one is pretty good because that's 200 extra gold per minute um so they're building that we will obviously fill in more houses now and um, to get your men at arms and everything ready and now you can start playing into pushing and so forth the first thing you want to get out is mangonel so you can deal with any masses on there so as you can see even the wolf not doing major damage um, on the prelate. Be careful of the enemy protecting these uh, relics. Maybe send the horsemen and so forth to help protect them. But you can see how quickly, under 10 minutes, um, we have all three relics, even with population delays, um, back in the base. So now prelates are done. You can use them to inspire your villagers that are outside these uh, red. The, 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 the Arkham Chapel uh, to assist with that inspiration or heal up some units and so forth and that's basically the standard build or you can get the barracks out and then you want to get those barracks upgrades I just want to show you what they look like because obviously your gold is going to start increasing and then you can also progress over to sending a few villagers um, onto stone so you can defend a little bit better and most of the time you'll deal with one gold vein and maybe your second gold vein you really don't need these forward golds in most of your games if you do that it, you're playing a little bit wrong or too late to get to uh, what you need to so as soon as the barracks are done you're getting the uh, upgraded men at arms, heavy maces, and two handed maces. And you'll fold that in with mangonels, um, and if you can, some crossbowmen. Because if you get them uh, the upgraded men at arms, they're going to do better than the spearmen because they have the health, and they also deal the heavy mace damage against uh, heavy targets, plus the extra um, upgrade that you can get there. Um, and one thing that I actually did forget is to just fill in a barracks if you know that obviously we don't have the Mindsway Palace we have the uh, blacksmith that you get before uh, you go for the Redsmith Cathedral but after your military production so military production blacksmith and then Redsmith Cathedral are basically four houses and then filling in obviously now we're going into mid and late game once the blacksmith is done um, with this type of combination or, or team that you have um, one of the first upgrades you want to do is get Bloomberry because the men at arms are by nature quite strong. You'll get the military academy to increase the production speed and then you'll fill in your other upgrades and get the plus twos as well. But that's basically going for a fast Richness Cathedral, fast castle age. That's the Holy Roman Empire. Okay. Okay guys, so now we're going into, you can see I, I, I removed all the resources, um, so we're actually going to play this as a normal game, normal game. we're playing against the English. Um, so I want to show you guys a tower rush as the Holy Roman Empire, inherently they're not the best when it comes to tower rushing, make sure that flag's blue. Um, but yeah, they are, they, you are capable of doing that and I'll try to do my, my best at it. Um, you see I'm exploring the back of my base first, um, usually find a few sheep, you do find a few sheep right here, uh, sit in the back, so you have just that starting food with. So now we're going into a house, gold vein is actually really really far back, very dangerous if you're playing against the English like this, um, but it's going to be fine for what we want to do. So we're waiting for the inspired villagers, dropping them off. The gold. You don't need the initial immediate more than that food supply, but we have the house and the sheep. Um, we'll actually move the sheep over to this side just to make it a little bit easier. No, don't kill that. Okay, you can. But we'll move the sheep over to this side. So if we do put the Arkham Chapel down, um, 
will actually have the sheep in in line of the uh, inspiration from the Arkham Chapel. So that's five sheep that we have so far. Um, so what I usually do, I scout all the way to like uh, two thirds of this line at the top, and then I cut across like this. So from from north to south, um, and then basically back. So I do two rounds before I go and scout out the enemy. You can see we're picking up sheep along the way as well. So that's that's pretty good. That's like the standard I use. Uh, keep those villager production up. We're going for the um, six villagers here and four villagers here, and then the transition into wood. Yeah. Um, we'll send the pillar over to the gold. Once you have those that villager inspired, you can see now we're slowly going to start technically running out of food here. Um, but that's fine. We want to get to that 300, 400 food. Um, basically, this is perfect. But you'll have more sheep if you need to come back earlier. Uh, just come back earlier. You can see there's another sheep here. So we'll, we are still fine. Uh, nice little pickup here. If you get something like that, it is worth coming back if you're running out of uh, sheep to just drop that off. So almost at that 400 gold mark, you can see the prelate is there. You can use uh, the gold villagers, three of the gold villagers, drop off the gold, get the Arkham Chapel. Move all of the villagers with food uh, over to wood, and you have those 170 food. Turn your villagers up, drop in the sheep here, and now we're going to scout out the enemy. So we know he's usually right on the other side of the map. Um, so we're sending him in this general direction. He has a keybind, so any attacks, you can't run into the town tent or something that's going to make you die. Please don't lose your scout. Um, but we have these heavy villagers. You can see now we're on zero. It's more difficult to tower rush with the... Um, with the... Uh, what do you call it? Holy Roman Empire. Other factions do it better, but that's okay. And now we're going over to stone. We actually, we actually want to, to get some stone up, and I'll show you guys why. We want to get arrow, arrow slit upgrades, um, almost 100 wood here, you can see, uh, there we go. So now two of these villagers, not three, we want to shift click them, drop off the wood so you don't lose it. And now we are moving in this forward direction. This is called tower rush, guys. So obviously the English are playing much more slower than a normal player would. We have those four villagers now on, or three villagers on the stone. Ark and Chapel almost done, sending more villagers over to stone. And you can see we still have some villagers on food. Still not, uh, you know, losing out any villager production on the food. Um, let's just scout this out properly. But basically we want to cut off any resources. So... We want to see, okay, there's a gold mine here, stone here, he has the villagers right there on the food. Uh, we want to see where the wood line is, or the berries, or is he doing anything like that, right? So we're going to bring these villagers uh, uh, back around. This is actually, you can see they're close there, but we're, we're bringing this around, just hop back to the base. You can press H or you can press, um, uh, you can keep on it like this. So all those villagers back on food, uh, let's pull the... Just put the house. So okay, that's that's pretty fine. We'll, we'll get rid of the scout, but you see those villagers are running away, um, and all you want to do, you can see that range there. So we kind of want to be in that range. Here. They will contest this. They might even pull villagers or something like that. Uh, but even if the first one is not in range, that's absolutely fine. Now we're still in a good place right now, so we are going to train archers. Our um, food production is picking up, so we get a few more villagers out there. Um, I'll show you guys on there once this one is done how much you need for the upgrades, so you know how much to to get um, for your upgrades. Now the first outpost, if it's not within range, you can actually build it out of line of sight of these villagers. They they don't necessarily have to see. You. But once I garrison here. You can see I'm harassing those villagers, and you can actually garrison the scout as well. Uh, start sending forward some archers. That's four archers already there, but now it means that's getting isolated. He can't really do anything there, right? Now we get the arrow slit upgrade. It's 18 gold and 37 stone. That's nothing, guys. So we use the villagers. Uh, let's just wait for that gold because obviously we train a few archers. Um, 
You know, this is a, a normal game. We did nothing crazy. We have a few sheep here. We have uh, more on the on the on the stone. You can start sending more villagers onto gold to start getting your second age. And now we move a little bit closer because um, this town center with the arrow slits is going to protect you here. And if anything attacks you, here, you just move back to your second outpost. So all you're doing is you're isolating any production that's happening here. Because this can't reach those villagers, but this can. And that is basically just on the edge of this first room. And also that arrow slit upgrade gives you a little bit more range. So now we can start bringing these arrows in, uh, or the archers in, and, and start doing a little bit more damage there. You see, I'm I already picked off two villagers. Some of them were low, more arrows going in garrison. While they're garrison, get the arrow slit upgrade. Can even garris, uh, check out with the scout. So there's the gold mine back here. If they are back there, um, you can see these archers are just back here. Now he's trying to defend. He's not really going to do much. Just be careful, the English town center does do a lot of damage. Okay, so now we are here at the back of the base. Um, and now we can start training units. So we have the double um, isolation, we can actually push forward after this to go isolate the wood. But any problems, we just move these villagers or units back into the outpost, and then we are safe. And you technically can pay with about 10 units. Uh, let's build another house. Let's take actually force these archers back. You can see he spent another 50 lumber now on the lumber camp right here. We're actually going for a little attack right here um, strength some men at arms and let's get a blacksmith going yeah see so yeah, I'm, I'm not even perfect I, I'm, I'm also making mistakes you know, uh, with my with my units careful of the English but the woodlands pretty isolated now don't have to worry about that uh, let's send them forward to here there's men of arms right here. They're just going to siege this down. Don't have to worry too much about that. We have the arrow slit upgrade, so that's actually going to help protect us. We can't get close enough on the English. Um, you can see that scout coming back. There's going to be an outpost here. He's not in H2 because it is an easy AI. I do understand that. But you see now we're getting harassed there. So all we want to do is isolate the gold then. So just covering the gold. We have the outpost here. We have men of arms here. Uh, we'll turn, take a villager training a blacksmith because we did go for the um, Arkham Chapel. And you can see the gold is pretty low. But we'll get that gold up really quickly. And 600 stone is way too much. I should have stopped about on 300 stone. Um, but you can go now for a second town center if you have the wood. But yeah, just get the gold up, get that food up. You can still see how I still have sheep left uh, from the few. I got three sheep and the initial five around the base. So now we're training up those men at arms, uh, taking the blacksmith, and we're going to wait for that siege engineering uh, upgrade. We can even get a, a, get a market to stabilize on the economy, see how comfortable we are now. Um, Defending there. What did I? No, that's. Let's go there. So even even getting too close to the um, enemy outpost, uh, 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 what do you call the town center, we still didn't lose those units. So these uh, arrow slits really, really do make a big difference. You can go for the fortified, which gives you extra health and fire armor, so they can't siege you down as quickly. Uh, let's get the um, siege engineering, and we'll use this to stabilize, get some more houses going. And just a few villagers. I'm not even playing perfect, guys. Like, I have, you know, idle villagers, I'm not too much on the food. Uh, we are even idling with the um, town center on the on the berries and stuff like that. But this enemy is already isolated. You see on the gold, no no gold farming for him, just wood. Um, so you can't really do anything else than early minute arms, and um, you can't even train archers because he doesn't have it. So we we'll send another men of arms back this side just to go see what's going on there. Now we'll move those archers because it is men at arms with him. We'll move the men at arms back. Get another outpost. He's on the berries. 
Sorry, there we go. Being very aggressive with this outpost. Straight there, just protect the villagers. See the men arms pushing those those villagers back. Uh, these units are getting getting those uh, upgrades off. And we'll start with the run. So we can actually start training units um, all the way back this side. And you can use the market if you don't have. I usually bind it to eight. We have some idle villagers here, send them over to food. Uh, we can use the market to actually sell some of that stone uh, and buy some wood. So we can do more things, get that upgrade in, and now we want to go isolate the gold. These units, once they are down there, we move them over here. And we'll send the ramp over to start dealing with the dancing. You can see the dancing is actually focusing the ramp, which does not make any problem for us in this case we can actually cancel that uh, upgrade and push these units straight forward onto the um, outpost here so this is this is outpost rushing guys you can see we're sitting on units we're not doing anything too crazy but um you know this is this is really really effective in a lot of games and they can't they can actually change target focus um by physically selecting the outpost and making them target units and so on but that's not going to do much uh, in this type of scenario you, know, you can even use the archers now get another round out get the outpost uh, arrow split upgrade out and you know when you're this aggressive you're basically building on top of the enemy base um, there's not much more that they can do in this type of scenario i'm going to finish this game just to show you guys we are going to reach castle age uh, basically while they are sieging down there we go Get the Resonance Cathedral out. Uh, do we have the gold? Yep. And we start sending prelates to those um, relics. We didn't even scout out properly, so don't even know where those relics are. There's probably going to be one here and around there. So we'll scout that out. But at this stage, you know, we're in a really, really good place to finish the game and to see the villagers. Um, just two villagers, nothing crazy, you know, um, to, to put a lot, a lot of pressure. We built four outposts, a barracks, a stable, uh, almost five outposts, and a ram basically with the units that we trained right in the back of the enemy space. And we isolated the wood line, we eventually isolated the gold line. But in this type of scenario, you want to isolate the gold first because if they, if they can't reach 200 gold, they can't um, go into castle age or uh, feudal age. And against more aggressive players, that's basically the best case scenario. But yeah, that's basically the three main tactics I think is viable for uh, the Holy Roman Empire. I don't think there's much more you should worry about right now. Obviously, there's late game strategies like your Imperial Age and so forth. Uh, going for your specific units like Blankenets and Mangonels and whatever. But on a strategy basis, um, I think this is basically all you need to know. But thank you very much for watching guys if you liked it please leave a like and do subscribe for more content and i'll check you guys in the next one bye bye